welcome to episode one of uh, Standard Sucks. Uh, we're your hosts. My name is Marcus Kestris. And I'm your patient. Hello, <laughs> Marcus. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about Aria. So, uh, Anna works uh, on the HTML5 spec. Uh, also works for Opera Software, but the opinions voiced here are his own. Um, and yeah, so Anna's going to tell us a bit about Aria. So, what is Aria? Uh, so, Aria stands for. Um, well, well, let me say like this. I mean, this old patient thing is kind of crap. <laughs> uh, Area stands for uh, assistive, rich, sorry, accessible, rich internet application. People today are creating web applications using diffs, spans, classes, and a whole pile of JavaScript. Now, using um, assistive technology, such as a screen reader on top of your browser, you can't make any sense of all this pile of crap. So, what Area does is it has a bunch of widgets and a bunch of properties for those widgets and it allows you to expose those on ordinary div and span elements and what the browser then does is it takes these attributes and it exposes those to the assistive, assistive technology so that the assistive, assistive technology sees ah this is actually a checkbox okay. it's not some image element with Donkey donkey displays on it. No, it's a checkbox, and if I, I can interact with it because if I press a key, then it becomes unchecked, and then the assistive technology also gets that exposed once again. All right, so makes sense. So it's a, uh, obviously a, a technology for, like you said, uh, for assistive technologies for screen readers and and so on. Right. So, so I understand obviously the the Aria proposal came from somewhere. Do you know much of the uh, the history? So it's obviously been developed from, you know, where, where did the ARIA come from? Who, who originally developed it? Um, I'm not sure. I think it was people from IBM that, that were pushing for this. And, and initially Aaron Leventhal from uh, Mozilla uh, did an implementation. Uh, this, this was shipping in Firefox too. And originally uh, the ARIA stuff uh, has been, uh, or it has always been done in the, and, and is still being done in the W3C, uh, WAI, PF working group, but PF stands for protocol and formats, and I think WAI stands for uh, Web Accessibility Initiative. So this is kind of like the W3C stuff for area, I uh, well, for this kind of stuff. Well, yeah. Um, and so, so initially, the whole proposal was based around this whole W3C premise of you need to use namespaces and we're going to XHTML2 so it needs to fit with the XHTML2 model and so 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 with Firefox and and, and then because like the whole web is actually based on HTML they made this kind of JavaScript hack that sort of worked in Firefox um, and then authors have to include this JavaScript library in their page and then they have to use some really special class name values that was the initial proposal so, um, and yeah, so that, that's kind of the history. Yeah, so there seems to be that, you know, there's obviously two camps here. There's the, the XHTML, XML people yeah. trying to push for namespaces. And then there's HTML5, uh, which is also capable of handling namespaces in the, in the X, XML, uh, or in the XML flavor of it. So, um, so how did the what working group was working on HTML5 and also the, the HTML working group, obviously the, the two are together, so uh, how have they kind of addressed this problem of not being able to use namespaces in the HTML serialization of, um, of HTML5? Right, right. So, so, so what happened like after uh, this stuff uh, shipped in Firefox 2, more people got kind of interested and, and uh, like the W the what we G are seekable, did our camera just turn off? No. It did not turn off. All right. Okay. So the screen went blank <laughs> on the Mac. Well, <laughs> so what happened was that uh, first show all people. <laughs> so so what happened was that um, other people started getting interested in area. It seemed like this thing was going to fly, into what we G R C Cable, um, and, and people from Opera and Internet Explorer they got, also got interested in area. But so so the main problem we saw was that it didn't work quite well in HTML. 
of for HTML, I'll just have to use all this kind of hacky syntax. While HTML is actually like is the primary platform we use on the web today. So it, it would be way better if if Aria worked nicely in HTML and we didn't have to use all these class attribute values, right? Yep. Yeah, so I guess so, so, so um, Simon Peters. Um, um, I'm not sure if he was already employed by Opera or, or I think I think he was working at Opera when he made the proposal. Um, we, uh, was to to use and I think maybe the proposal also originated from Ian Hickson or something. Um, the proposal was to use the role attribute uh, to designate the widget role and and it like so you have role equals checkbox or role equals tree item for an item inside a tree. Um, and then for the properties, you would have area dash property name. Um, so I believe there is like area dash uh, value now, which would give the current value of the widget. Um, so and what what we did, um, so so that that was kind of the counter proposal, and that was actually people really liked that proposal because it would work well in HTML. And it would be consistent with XHTML as well. Like you could use the same DOM, uh, you could use set and get attribute in the same way. You didn't have to use set attribute in S in the in the one, and use something else in the other. Um, also, it would work well in Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer has a styling issue if you use, uh, for instance, a colon instead like that. That is kind of the counter proposal here. It was instead of using classes in HTML, use area colon and then the property name. Um, and, and that doesn't work well in Internet Explorer. That also creates an inconsistency with HTML and XHTML, because in XHTML, if you start using the colon, you also need some kind of namespace decoration in scope, yep. which makes the whole thing also more complicated for people to use. Yeah, so you, you need two, two code branches, basically, if you yeah, wanted to. Yeah, so yeah, you would need two code branches, and yeah. Um, and the area dash, you, you don't. And yep. it's, it's like, it's what you're already being used to, so you're already used to how attributes without namespaces work. That's what the vast majority of all this works. And given that it is prefixed with area dash, that that, that was kind of necessary because area, for instance, has a, has a property state called checked, which yep. indicates if the, the checkbox uh, role, uh, it, whether it's like activated or not. Yep. But HTML also has a checkbox uh, attribute. So in order to avoid clashes with HTML and future extensions to HTML, we decided to use the area dash prefix, and since area dash is like pretty unique, uh, this would also work really well for SVG. Yep. And 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 then then you could use the same stuff in HTML, XHTML, and SVG everywhere. You would use the same APIs to access and set. So so I think that that's kind of the idea, and I I kind of like it how, how how that would work. And I think if, given that this stuff is kind of complex already, like r retrofitting existing applications to become accessible. It's not something you, uh, you, well, ordinary authors are interested in. I think we should keep this as simple as possible so, so that they don't need the, uh, another level of abstraction for some namespace declarations that need to be in scope and figure out how all that works together.